Another issue that frequently comes up when accounting for stocks is a stock split. What exactly is a stock split? Well, a stock split is essentially a company manipulating the amount of shares and the par value of the shares that it has on the market in order to change the price of that stock. For example, a company could be trading, let's say $300 a share. $300 is a lot of money to buy one share of a stock. And there's a significant portion of investors that are unwilling to buy into a company at that high price point but they might be willing to buy in at $100 per share, which means a company, by decreasing the market value of its stock, can actually increase the overall demand because it prices more potential investors in. And to do so, they enact what is called a stock split. Essentially what they do is they increase the number of shares of the common stock outstanding in that company, and they decrease the market value of those shares proportionally to how much they're putting out there. So if you had a three for one stock split on a $300 stock, it would put three times as many shares out into the market, but each one of those shares would only be worth a third as much. So lower down to a hundred, therefore enticing more people to buy into the stock. Let's do an example of a stock split, this time for Greg's Games. They have 3,150,000 shares issued and outstanding of their $1 par common stock. Well, the market value of their stock is $50 per share at the time of the split, and the split they are affecting is a two-for-one split. So what this is going to do in a two-for-one split is put twice as many shares out into the market, but make each share's par value be worth only half as much. So if before the split they had 3.15 million shares issued in outstanding of common stock and that common stock had a $1 par value, after the split they would have twice as many shares. So what you do is you take the number of shares issued in outstanding before the split and multiply it by what I call the split number, which is the lead number in the ratio. This is a two for one split, so the split number is this two. 3.15 million times 2 gives us the 6,300,000 shares will be issued and outstanding after the split. For par value, you take your par value before the split, in this case a dollar, and divide it by the split number. So this is a two for one split. We take that one dollar par, we divide it by two, we come up with a new par value of 50 cents. And if you take the par value of a share and multiply it by the number of shares which are outstanding at the time, you get the overall value of your common stock. So $1 par times 3.15 million shares means that before the split, Greg's Games had $3,150,000 worth of common stock out in the market, or at least $3.15 million worth of their common stock's valuation was attributable to the par value that they issued before. After the split, they have 6.3 million shares. Each one of those has a par of 50 cents. Well, 6.3 million times 50 cents is 3,150,000. So the split is only changing the number of shares that are out there, and it's changing the per share par price. But what it doesn't change is the overall amount that Greg's Games would have recorded uh, on their books in common stock $1 par when they issued stock. So since it's not materially changing the position of the com company, there is no formal entry required. Typically, a split in stock is instead noted by a memorandum entry. Essentially, you just fill in a journal entry with the number of shares that you had issued in its par before the split and the number of shares that you'll have issued in its par after the split. 